thousands of other commuters stream out of the center's bustling train stations. So. I had 14 children that day. We're going to observation deck upstairs to get a bird's eye view of New York. 56 miles away, across the Hudson River, stock trader Tim Leonard, Iyad Ismoil, and Ramzi Youssef are driving a 10-foot yellow rider van. Following them is a car driven by Mohammed Salome. The FBI has a file on Salome. He is a known associate of reputed Islamic terrorists. Salome had leased the van from a rider rental agency in Jersey City three days earlier and reported it stolen just yesterday. It now carries a 1,500-pound bomb made of urea nitrate and hydrogen. 11.55 a.m. The yellow rider van pulls into level B2 of the World Trade Center garage. Iyad Ismoil steers it to an illegal parking space. Mohammed Salome follows behind. Rosemary Russo starts rounding up her five-year-old sightseers on the Trade Center observation deck. Tim Lang pulls into the center's garage, four blocks from his office. In the rider van, Ramzi Youssef readies a fuse attached to the 1,500-pound bomb. On the 65th floor, manager Carl Selinger leaves to get some lunch before his next appointment. Well, the Port Authority has a cafeteria on the 43rd floor. I figured that, well, let me go get some uh, salad to bring back to my desk because I really wanted to prepare for this meeting. Gene Fasulo and two co-workers decide to go downstairs. So we were actually on our way to lunch. Then we we're going to catch up on the events of the last week or so. On the B2 level, Ramzi Youssef lights a fuse on the bomb. The fuse is encased in rubber, which suppresses smoke and allows for a 10 to 20 minute burn time. 150 feet away, the center's supervising engineer, Alan Reese, heads down the hallway to his office. I was going downstairs to the office to see some friends and just talk about what we we're gonna do this weekend and how things were going. Two floors below, on B4, engineer Fred Furby finishes a job and tells his co-worker, Richie Walsh, to go upstairs to turn in their worksheets. I was telling them to go take the paperwork, turn it in, so they don't come down and bother us, you know? And I just was so insistent on it, so he wouldn't turn it in. 12.05 p.m. Youssef and Ismoil jump into Salome's car and speed out of the garage. 12.10 p.m. The fuse on the bomb has been burning for six minutes. Off-duty Port Authority detective Thomas McHale reads a newspaper on the Trade Center's concourse level as he waits for a train to New Jersey. McHale happens to be in the building for a doctor's appointment following a work-related injury. The morning I, I was actually off. It's 12.17 p.m. I had gotten into the elevator in Press 65. I'm approached by an individual who asks for um, directions to the North train. We're waiting now for the elevator to come for us. I was standing within the door frame and had just opened the door to my office. We entered an elevator on the 72nd floor. I was cutting insulation, you know, putting it on the cart. I was in my office and my friend was coming up and we were going to have pizza. I got out of the car, opened the back seat door, um, reached for my things, had my car keys in my hand. The rental van detonates with a force equivalent to 800 pounds of TNT, tearing through 11-inch concrete floors in the bowels of America's famous landmark. I was physically lifted up into the air and thrown back with terrific force. All of a sudden, just boom, something hit me. And it's like, it actually, like, it took my breath away. It blew me across the room. The exterior walls of the garage came caving into the path concourse level. On the street, car windshields as far as 300 feet away are blown apart as the wave of the blast shoots up through the buildings. The uh, elevator just came to emergency stop. 
uh, it jiggled as it as it stopped quickly and then all of a sudden it stopped it like shuddered and then stopped we were waiting to go down the lights started flickering and the alarm started going off relief um, I basically was whole and I wasn't blinded at the elevator bank a floor below the roof deck of tower 2 kindergarten teacher Rosemary Russo has one purpose all I knew was to get these children myself and the parents to a safer place she and her five-year-olds hustle upstairs from the elevator bank to wait outside in the 29 degree cold and falling snow 110 floors above ground in a hallway on the 66th floor so tries anything to keep her children calm despite the chaos more than a hundred floors below we were able to see fire engines red I said what color is that that's red in an elevator stuck on the 58th and smoke inhalation I'm hurting I'm coughing up I had uh, a black stain around my, my mouth that didn't go away for days Kindergarten teacher Rosemarie Russo and her students have now spent almost three hours outside on the roof of Tower 2 in the sub-freezing cold. They spend another two hours waiting inside near the staircase as firefighters radio for help. The plan is to bring them to a makeshift triage unit on the 94th floor. The firefighter said, okay, this is the staircase. Intermittently, you're going to uh, come across other firefighters in the stairwells, and they will be there leading you. More than 90 floors below, Officer Thomas McHale is exhausted and hurting. He is about to leave when he hears the call from the firefighters trying to bring down the kindergartners. Myself and the guys that I was with ascended the stairs um, to the 94th floor, finding different people with different ailments on the way up. And um, eventually made it to, to the school children. By now, the children have made it to the triage unit on the 94th floor. They ushered us into an area, and they gave us, uh, how nice they are, they gave us cookies and milk for the children. Detective McHale stays behind as the firemen help the 14 children make their way down through the darkness of Tower 2's stairwell, a full 94 floors down. They put a person with a flashlight to eliminate the stairs to bring the kids down. You know, it took a couple of hours. As night falls, the injured McHale still cannot bring himself to leave. He stays on the roof to help with air rescues. Port Authority manager Carl Selinger has now been all alone in a smoky elevator on the 67th floor for five and a half hours. Finally, firefighters...